Hi everybody, it is September 6, 2018. I posted a video on the Delta Fire 2 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm on the East Coast. This fire was 5,000 acres. Now it's tripled in size. Not even 24 hours. I'm going to go through some information. I will link below to the videos and I will link below to all of the articles. But here, this is the Delta Fire. Take a look at what drivers saw when they came upon the flames right here. This is yesterday afternoon and many of these drivers had to abandon their vehicles. Brandon, we got to get out and walk. We can't stay right here. Look at that side just caught on fire. We cannot stay right here. Wow, that is so terrifying. Several drivers, in fact, had to be rescued. One person was hurt. A number of semi-trucks, look at this, burned to a crisp. Officials say that fire has now burned more than 5,000 acres. Zero percent containment. Okay, it is now 15,234 acres, I believe. We'll get to that in a minute, but it is still zero percent contained. Americans, we are at war. Could you please, please begin to have conversations with your friends, your family, your coworkers, whomever is trying to educate you on what is taking place? No, it is not global warming. It is not climate change. There are things happening that you have been ignoring, like what is taking place in the sky, the spraying of uh, metals and chemicals that are incendiary, but we will get to that in a moment. Oh my gosh, it's hot, it's hot. Whoa, feel the heat? A terrifying sight on southbound I-5 for Lori and Graham Beck. Of course, it's just a beautiful sunny day, and then the next moment around the next bend, it's like, what is going on here? Yeah, it was the couple was headed from Oregon to their Bay Area home when they saw the Delta fire. Lori says she could feel the heat in the car as flames raged on both sides of the interstate. Oh, Mama. I was just glad that we were there when we were and we were able to get through. Did our car get roasted? Lori says she noticed a truckload of hay on fire around 1.30 Wednesday afternoon, roughly 30 minutes after the U.S. Forest Service says the Delta fire began. <laughs> Traffic came to a stop for nearly 45 miles from Redding to Mount Shasta. Shasta County Sheriff's deputies began evacuating north of Lakehead to the Shasta-Siskiyou County line. The Delta Fire is burning about 10 miles away from the Hearst Fire. A Type 1 team is now handling both at the same time. At this point, there are no major towns in the evacuation zone. Astonishing, I guess. I, I've, I've not seen something like that before. And a, a, little, a little scary. It's a little scary. Well, Americans, you are at war and you are to be terrified 24-7. It is not global warming. It is not climate change. This is an unconventional war that we are in. We have been in for a long time. More and more life is being destroyed. Northern California wildfire triples in size, spurs evacuations tripled in size overnight. How does that happen? Because the winds are not that strong. These fires, well, they seem to leap over interstates and they leap over rivers. Something is not right. And if you are an adult, you would hear what is being communicated to you and what is being communicated to you should beg questions. Both sides of the Interstate 5, near the Oregon state line, uh, it expanded 23 square miles, this fire, prompting mandatory evacuations. They, they're not giving out any numbers in terms of how many have been evacuated. It is not a densely populated area. But there are homes. Last night I got a email from a subscriber, a link to a GoFundMe page, but it couldn't be verified. But someone put up a GoFundMe because their parents' home, they lost everything. 
there are homes in this area. So how many people will be affected, we don't know. Uh, but it is a rural area with scattered homes. The blaze was human caused. We don't know what caused it. They're not telling us what caused it, but it was human caused. They're saying it's possibly a hay truck, uh, a truck carrying a lot of uh, bales of hay caught on fire. And that is what, that's what is the cause of this fire raging out of control, exploding. Hang on. Okay, one thing is for sure, you certainly have a lot of strange happenings that are causing extremely destructive fires in California over and over and over again. You know, a flat tire caused the incineration of homes in the uh, Redding area. Oh, God, you know, this is really, talk about surreal, talk about surreal, you know, we have all of these people walking around, you know, just accepting the abject lies they're being fed and refusing to even consider what we have to say. So it's human caused, if you read the articles, all of this is climate change and humans are bad. That That is essentially what these articles are saying. Humans, humans are causing all of these fires and humans, you're causing the global warming and the climate change and we've got to get rid of the humans because they're bad. Okay, well, trucks being incinerated, it, it, literally like they're gone a truck, a semi-truck, gone. That looks more like it was hit with, yes, either a directed energy weapon or a little bomb. The uh, There's vehicles scattered all over. 45 miles of the I-5 was closed in both directions, causing great disruption. I got a comment from someone who said that they take I-5 to Canada every year. And I believe, if I'm remembering correctly, they said that's like the only route to get to Canada, to get into Oregon. Well, then this is causing an awful lot of destruction and an awful lot of death of wildlife. Again, Amtrak uh, between Sacramento and Oregon was delayed. There are rural homes and cabins in and around the forest where these evacuation orders were mandated, but the city of Dunsmuir with about 1,500 people, and they're saying in this article, 15 miles, no, it's now two miles away from Dunsmuir. So Dunsmuir, it's 0% contained. Are we looking at Dunsmuir incinerated? We may be. So the residents of Dunsmuir, if that's the correct pronunciation of the city, um, they were issued an evacuation warning urging them to prepare to leave if the fire threatened them. So this is a link to or in it, an article with an awful lot of fire maps. But listen to this. In less than 24 hours, the fire size had exploded to more than 15,000 acres because three fires merged into one. And it may merge with the HERS fire. I didn't even know there was a HERS fire. And apparently there is a HERS fire. And that is 75% contained and it has burned over 46,000 acres. And did you know about the HERS fire? I didn't. But they're now saying that the Delta flyer, fire, sorry, flyer, um, the Delta fire may merge with the HERS fire. But three fires merged. Okay, well, 
Now they're suggesting that it was a hay truck that caused this fire. That's one fire. What started the other two fires? That's another new normal that is happening in California. You don't have just one fire igniting at the same time. You have multiple fires igniting at the same time. So that's your big questions in your minds. Um, so the Delta fire, you've got the, is it Natchez? I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong fire. You've got so many fires. Essex fire, uh, Hare's fire, Hur's fire. Oh, um, Curlin fire, Delta fire. Well, they're very, they're almost on top of one another. And the latest on this fire, I will get to in a second, but here you have the California governor's office that has an active fire map for you. You've got Google fire map, and there's a lot of fires. You've got fires in Arizona, still fires in, in uh, Colorado, Nevada, Utah, and a whole lot in California going on. So you also have the evacuation, uh, all of the evacuations right here. If you live in this area, click on the link. Um, you'll see the areas that have been evacuated. There are evacuation centers open in Mount Shasta Community Center. A small animal shelter is available at the Mount Shasta Humane Society. All right. Um, this is the latest update. It was updated 41 minutes ago. It regularly updates, so click on the link every now and then, and you can find out. Not much has happened, but I will tell you that the winds are not that high. So what is happening? You got winds of 14 to 18 miles per hour, 5 miles per hour, 15 to 20 miles per hour. These winds are changing, but they're not the 75 mile per hour winds that made the Thomas fire and the other fires rage out of control. So what is making this rage out of control? Could it be this? What you are looking at right here, the geoengineering, the dumping of incendiary metals, chemicals into the atmosphere that come on down to the forests, to the trees, to the homes. This is not a contrail that you are looking at. And you will see the plane turns off, the plane turns on. This is not a water vapor trail. It's not a contrail. This is what in the vernacular is referred to as a chemtrail. And it, we, we are being so dumped with dangerous, toxic nanoparticulates that not only cause these fires to rage out of control, but affects our health. And for some reason, there's an awful lot of people who are ignoring what is taking place right above their heads. And frankly, as an adult, go ahead. You know, it, it's, it's immoral behavior for people to just ignore what is taking place because this is a crime against humanity. It's a crime against the earth. But if you have children, it is, I'm sorry, for you to be ignoring all of the toxins now that we are being assaulted with. Yeah, a lot of people think this, this is harsh. You should never have had children because it's your job to protect them. And ignoring all of these dangerous happenings, you're not protecting them. So, David Keith, Mr. Geoengineer, Harvard. If I could just clarify, so 10 megatons of aluminum dumped into the, the uh, atmosphere, we have no 
human health improvements. So, so let me be more careful here. We're going to separate out the toxicological but so they will know we've only begun to research. We've only begun to research. We haven't done anything serious on the and it could be something terrible that we'll find tomorrow. We haven't done anything terrible. Aerosol geoengineering looks like it is so cheap that the cost is basically not going to be an issue. That means that implementation decisions will be risk to risk decisions the risk of doing it against the risk of not doing it. And it makes the problem of how we govern it fundamentally harder and different than normal. Um, another reason why I think more knowledge is good is I think this will turn out to be more complicated and harder to do than we now think. So I've told you that it's cheap to deliver materials to the stratosphere, and I'm convinced that's true. I don't think that will change. But I think the more we do research, the less easy this will look, the more complicated the environmental effects will look. And that's a good thing, because right now it looks too easy. So I think that if we do more research, we're likely to find out that it's harder and more complicated than we thought and that, that side effects are harder to manage, and that's a healthy outcome that will make it easier to do the management. It's an empirical question how people will actually react to knowledge about this. Another reaction is to say, if these crazy scientists are so concerned about putting CO2 in the atmosphere, they want to think about these things, then that might actually mean we should be more serious about the risk of CO2 in the atmosphere. And by the way, it's not really a moral hazard. It's more like free riding on our grandkids. And by the way, it's not really a moral hazard. It's more and like free riding on our grandkids. This is how sick these people are. This is how, how unbelievably psychopathic these people are. It's not really a moral hazard. It's more like free riding on our grandkids. Are you kidding? Well, guess what? They have been free riding on our grandkids and kids. They have been dumping aluminum along with barium, strontium, uh, lithium, lithium into the atmosphere for a very, very long time. Very interested in making sure everyone knows what we're doing. We're not, um, we're a civilian space agency dedicated to science and research and so on. So we're very, uh, very keen to make sure that the taxpayers know what we're doing and everything. Well, you know, when the when the article came out in the major newspapers, including the Huffington Post, there was no mention of lithium. Not one. Not one mention of lithium. Until I heard the recording of the actual, I, I listened to it. I listened to the rockets go off. I had no idea there was going to be a lithium dispersed. Until I heard payload lithium dispersed. Heard indicators of chemical deploys. Okay, I will link below to all videos, but here you will hear a recording. NASA dumping lithium into the atmosphere. Lithium, have you seen the pink skies? Lithium. Lithium. And incendiary mixture constituted of metals. What are those metals? Sodium, potassium, lithium. Barium, strontium, lithium, barium, strontium, along with aluminum, have been dumped into our atmosphere. And the dumping has been going on for years. So the reason why I bring this up is because everything now is incendiary. Forests especially. The trees are dying because of this geoengineering that has been taking place for a long time. Now this guy David Keith, he announces, announces in late 2017 that they're going to begin experimenting with geoengineering in Arizona in 2018 and people just believe him as if it hasn't been going on for such a long time. Why are our skies a pale blue or white color? Why do we see the grid patterns of these quote-unquote contrails? Look, listen to this and I, health tube, please don't give me a copyright strike.
but this is a pilot. Talk but, about yeah, talk chemtrails. about uh, chemtrails. We hear a lot about that. What are those, and is, are they for real? Well, when you look into that, when you ask questions, they say, oh, yeah, yeah, contrails. No, no, contrails are behind a jet. If you see a jet flying very high, the stripe, the condensed stripe behind it. That's normal. But in areas at first observed, where there's very little population, you see a jet airplane going, and it's not only one, they have four condensed stripes behind them. They go this way, this way, this way, this way, and then this way, this way, this way, this way. And when you inquire about it, ask people. You recognize that the real climate change scientists are truly ticked off. Because apparently nobody really is asking them. This is the special interest, in my opinion, it's the oil industry, the energy industry, that are blowing smoke up somebody's you-know-what and telling them that we have to lay a pattern up there to prevent sun energy from hitting Earth. And what they're doing in there, it's now pretty much determined. They're putting the aluminum, barium, and strontium. Now you take these chemicals and run them through a PubMed literature search in respect to human health. You will find more than 3,000 papers. Aluminum alone. I mean, aluminum, Alzheimer's, right? Mental. I mean, there's no question about it. There's no question about it. Okay, so Alzheimer's is exponentially increasing because people are breathing aluminum nanoparticulates. And I thought at the very beginning of this video he mentions that he's a pilot, so sorry, I might have been thinking about another video. We are in big trouble here. Big, big trouble. So, I'm going to link below to Worldview. If you don't know Worldview, uh, you can take a look. You can click on the link and you can take a look at how much aluminum, barium, strontium, lithium has been dumped on us. You can uh, go back in time. Here is the, uh, the date and it's October 16, 2017. Sorry, I've cut it off just a little bit. But I want to get to, uh, how about September 6, 2018. And the day before is better, September 5. And you go to the United States and you will see all of the dumping of toxic chemicals, not only in the United States, but all over the world. And you can just keep going back in time. And you can just scroll on uh, or click on a better view to zoom in. You can see all of the frequencies right here, the frequencies up here, but you can see all of the dumping of toxic chemicals, metals that are incendiary, causing these fires to rage out of control. And oh, you can go back and see there are some dates that it is just a wow. Now, Mother Nature does not work in defined lines. She doesn't have a ruler and she cuts off her cloud mass. You know, it's certain in certain areas. Um, these, you know, were referred to as like tire tracks. That's caused by microwave frequencies. So the inundation of these toxic chemicals, I mean, oh boy, it's destroying life, it's killing the trees, it's drying out the atmosphere. So when they talk about the dry conditions, you can bet, you can bet 
their dry conditions. Right for wildfires grown out of control. But yes, it goes on to Europe and all over the world. You can check it out. This is not natural cloud. They have taken over. They've usurped Mother Nature's role in life. And they are controlling the weather. So, um, incendiary ma materials, flammable metals. This is stanford.edu. Flammable metals, aluminum. Aluminum. David Keith dumping aluminum into the atmosphere. I'll link below. It's it. I understand, and in the comments that I'm getting from you, I I understand. You know, you're being very very upset. It is hard to watch what is taking place on a daily basis now. Not only human lives are being destroyed, but life itself is being destroyed. And because we can't get through to our fellow human beings, no matter what country we are living in, this destruction will continue. All